Hello there. So today we're going to be looking at another little product. This is the Silvercrest uh, battery free doorbell. And this actually caught my eye after seeing one of uh, Clive's uh, videos where he was talking about uh, kinetic uh, switches and uh, RF uh, bells, door openers, uh, whatnot. So this is a battery free doorbell that follows the same principle with the uh, kinetic uh, power for the uh, bell mechanism itself. So as we can see here, uh, no batteries required kinetic. Uh, that is referring to the uh, outdoor bell unit itself, which is uh, this buttoned uh, tool here. And then we have the plug-in speaker and receiver here that uh, chimes and flashes uh, when the bell is activated. So this whole system is working on 433 megahertz as a sort of standard for uh, uh, house weather stations and short range uh, instruments. So as you can see, I've uh, had a go at this already. So it's just a, this very simple units, uh, no batteries in here. Uh, you press the bell symbol and uh, it chimes in the indoor unit. Uh, it's a fairly sort of clickety-clack mechanism, so definitely generating uh, the power uh, when you uh, push the button in. So let's bring in our uh, universal tool opener and get this cracked open. So as you can see, our universal tool is uh, very effective at uh, getting these things disassembled quickly. Uh, we can see it's uh, fairly nicely spilled its guts here on the table. So we're left with uh, three pieces basically. The uh, control PCB, you can see it just has basically a big ground plane on one side and the components on the other. The uh, coil with magnet and the carrier that uh, actually holds the coil in. So the coil has uh, two contacts coming off of it right here, fairly uh, tensely uh, wound. Uh, and on this springy piece up front uh, that's pivoted on these plastic arms uh, is a little magnet that goes and clicks up and down. So when you press the bell, this is actually what moves. And as you can see, it's a very small range of movement uh, where we have this uh, iron uh, surround with the iron core going through the middle of the coil. And uh, then we have this little uh, magnet package that just clicks up and down uh, above the coil. So uh, I'll show you in just a second how that's set up uh, on paper. So the coil mechanism sits inside this plastic carriage and uh, this little uh, front piece slips in here and there's a little spring on here. So when it's inside the uh, bell mechanism, inside like this, when you press this bell, this is pressed down and that actuates this that goes click and is then returned by a spring. And out of these two contacts, uh, it powers this board. So this is uh, soldered onto these two contacts here, goes on like that, and then it delivers power onto the board through these two points. So uh, the electromagnet in the coil actually has a quite interesting setup. I've uh, sketched that out right here. So what we have going on is that we have our coil with the iron core. So this is representing the coil with the iron core uh, that goes through the middle here. And then we have this outside uh, metal plate uh, that surrounds it and, and comes out to, to these two lips. And then this here is this little package uh, in here that houses uh, a magnet uh, north and south inside uh, that little can. So we have the, the magnet in here with the little metal arms uh, uh, of the can. And uh, these then interact in two positions. So uh, you can see here, uh, we have magnetic flux changing direction to, to produce the pulse of uh, electricity. So when it's in one position, 
we have the top side of this little magnetic cup touching this uh, central iron core and the other south pole touching uh, uh, this uh, lip coming off here. So when it's in that position, we have our magnetic flux flowing this way through the coil from north pole to south pole. And then if we click our coil to the uh, other position, we actually change the direction of flux because this cup that's uh, interacting with uh, this core and outside sheathing is just moving up and down basically. So in the up or in one position, we have flux going into the coil and out the outside. When we switch it, this cup uh, just actuates to the other side, uh, moving the north pole to the outside sheathing so that we have the flux going in the opposite direction, coming out of the coil towards the cup. So every uh, actuation of this uh, uh, coil uh, produces a change of magnetic flux direction, which uh, causes a voltage to be generated. So if we look at uh, my oscilloscope measurements I managed to take of this coil, uh, out of circuit, we're actually able to get uh, over 18 volts on uh, these two output pins over a duration of almost two milliseconds. So actually quite a lot of uh, energy being generated just from that uh, simple push. Uh, in circuit, uh, we have uh, obviously a much lower voltage since it's being uh, pulled down by the circuit, which I'll show you in just a second. Uh, so we have 3.4 volts for seven milliseconds. This is, uh, you know, a, a rough picture of the, the curve we get on the oscilloscope. And then as you'll see uh, further in the circuit, there's a rectification diode and some capacitors. This is the power pulse that uh, the board is getting. So 20 milliseconds of 2.6 volts uh, on the capacitor side uh, of this little board. So if we have a look at the circuit on here, it's actually quite simple. Um, there's basically two parts to the circuit. Uh, we have the uh, electrical generating part. So we have the input of the coil coming in here. There's this diode that rectifies it. And then it goes into, uh, and then there's a capacitor obviously for uh, capturing that charge. And then it goes into this five pin SAW 23 chip that's a small buck regulator uh, into this inductor that provides a stable power rail. I think it's 2.25 volts in this case. Uh, there's actually the resistive divider here that uh, fixes the voltage. And then it provides that uh, power rail to uh, this chip here, which does uh, all the radio communication. So it's got the antenna uh, after this chain of capacitors. The chip has its uh, crystal to generate the uh, 433 megahertz signal. And it has uh, three jumpers that uh, you might be able to see here that are actually uh, button controls or button presses. We see here one of them's just been permanently jumpered over since this circuit is operating just in a momentary uh, kind of action. Uh, they don't need a button. The uh, click of the bell just generates the voltage pulse and gives power to the chip for that very short uh, period of time where it can uh, send off its uh, message and then it just shuts down due to uh, low voltage. So the chip we have here is a CMT, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it, CMT2105L. And uh, by some miracle, there actually was a data sheet for it. So that is just a on-off keying, uh, chip that's made for this kind of communication. Uh, I have this circuit drawn out here. So we have our kinetic coil that generates our voltage pulse. So in one direction, it's going to be positive here, negative here on the opposite switch. It's going to be negative and positive here. So that's giving us around 3.4 volts into the circuit. This is rectified through a shot key diode. And uh, there's this capacitor uh, that's there to uh, stabilize uh, the voltage in the circuit. Uh, then there's this odd uh, diode here, the, the uh, glass package one right here. I'm not actually sure what it's doing. Uh, 
I thought it was some kind of like flyback protection on the uh, reverse switching of the coil to provide a, a, a way for that uh, negative high voltage spike to get back to the coil, but that doesn't really work here. I don't know if it's like, just blowing through reverse biasing this diode to get back into the coil or whatever, but uh, this would make much more sense it was connected directly to the positive uh, of the coil to, to allow that return flyback to flow. But anyways, so we have our pulse rectified, uh, buffered here through this capacitor, and then it goes into our uh, buck chip. Uh, I wasn't able to find uh, the exact uh, designation of the chip. It's marked GU0B, but that didn't return um, any uh, data sheets, but it's obviously a similar copy to uh, uh, Texas Instruments TPS62200, which is the adjustable uh, type of DC-DC uh, -DC, uh, buck converter. So it has the voltage input and enable pin that's just tied to uh, the, the voltage input. The ground pin, it's output directly connected to our 2.2 uh, microhenry inductor here and uh, a feedback pin uh, that has this voltage divider of 180k and 51k to ground that fixes the voltage. So the formula that they use, the reference voltage of this chip is 0.5 volts, and then you have this formula here that gives you the output voltage, and that's 2.25 volts on uh, the output rail there. And uh, this output rail directly powers the uh, radio chip we have on here, which is the CMT2150L. Uh, this is the 433 uh, megahertz version. Uh, it is powered by this uh, 26 uh, megahertz crystal. And it has outputs for three keys that would be push buttons if this were a battery operated system but since here we're just powering it momentarily they just bridged one key position here that's actuated whenever the, the circuit has power so we have our uh, voltage vcc in a uh, ground the rf output through this uh, capacitor and inductor chain to the antenna uh, and it also had the provision for an LED here, but that doesn't seem to be implemented. I actually uh, tried putting uh, an LED and a resistor over these two pins that uh, should have been uh, an output LED when it's transmitting, but uh, it looks like the chip doesn't have that uh, function actually enabled in the programming. So as I said here, there's actually three keys that are available on this chip, which are uh, these three uh, jumper positions on the uh, top three pins of the chip. Uh, here, as I said, they're only using key two because when you set up uh, this bell, you actually have to synchronize it on the first power up with the receiver and uh, it automatically just picks up uh, that first transmission of this uh, jumper key two and that serves as uh, your synchronization. But you can actually uh, jumper either any one of these three keys or all three of them uh, at the same time. And you can, so what you can do, you can actually synchronize either multiple uh, bell switches with one transceiver, or you can have, uh, let's say you have three of these bells in your house and you don't want them altering at the same time. You can uh, just jumper different keys for uh, different bells, and then it'll uh, ring the receiver that's been coded to it. So apparently the receivers can uh, program in multiple uh, keys. Uh, so you can have either multiple bells actuating one receiver or, uh, yeah, I guess one receiver receiving multiple bells or multiple bells activating just one receiver. Uh, so each key apparently has a different code uh, programmed into the chip. And uh, when the key is depressed or jumpered, it uh, sends off that uh, on-off keying code to the receiver, which uh, activates the, the ringing. So that is pretty much uh, this small and dandy uh, system battery free, which is actually quite useful if you have this set up on your front door. Uh, you don't have to worry about the battery going flat. Uh, range wise, it uh, works uh, pretty well. So I think uh, these kinetic uh, devices are actually quite useful to save power. And it's uh, actually quite amazing how much energy you can actually deliver 
to a device like this just uh, through that button press that you have 20 milliseconds of stable power to, to run the uh, microprocessor, which is plenty of time to uh, send out uh, a short message uh, to uh, activate a bell. So thank you for watching, and uh, I hope to catch you next time. Take care.